Despite his earlier notions of suicide, Ren resisted being thrown off the bridge, grabbed the steel cables and held on with a fanatic's grip. The watch officer shoved him, struck his legs, his hands, his head, and yet something made Ran hold on. It seemed, when it came down to it, he wanted to live. How long this went on, he didn't know. Then it was gone. Without warning, the brute was off him. No, not entirely without warning. He'd heard some commotion in the distance, then nearer. A scuffle of some kind. Ran dropped to his knees, hard against the stone of the bridge. Wiping some of the blood from his eyes, he saw three other men take hold of the officer. One struck him several times, though not with such ferocity as Ran had suffered. "'Well, good evening, Captain Audley. For not for a stroll, in it?' The man spoke in the old upland accent of the northeast country, thought died out long ago. "'Now I know I may be getting a touch batty in my dotage, but I do distinctly recall a certain agreement. A détente, if you please.' "'Twixt myself and your beloved Auntie Cord, do I not?' "'And according to that understanding, "'I do believe this end of the bridge lies incontrovertibly "'within my harmonious domain, does it not?' "'Now it was the officer who spat blood onto the pavement. "'Wordy as ever, ain't you? "'Your little cockroach there crossed from the other side. "'From our side. I saw it.' "'Well, then, you should have stepped on him there, eh? "'You don't come into my house and start shite.' The man took something long and sharp and, with the speed and skill of an expert chirurgeon, opened the tiniest slice along the officer's cheek. Just enough to leave a scar. Now, there so you remember it. Go and tell Cordelia what you've done to earn it, and don't let me see you in my garden again. Not quite so proud now, the officer got to his feet, turned, and walked back across the bridge into the darkness. The three men laughed. <laughs> Nicely done, boss. Oh, thank you kindly for that thoughtful and substantive critique of my performance, Harold. Oh, lay me down to sleep with a smile tonight, thanks to that. The man handed the blade to his companion and looked down at Rand, who still knelt, weak and bloody. He was past middle age, with thick graying mutton chops and mustache and a bright orange swatch of silk covering one eye. You, you can piss off. Much though I appreciate you provisioning the opportunity to remind the competition of their place. I can't have transients marring the views of my territory. The three began walking toward the end of the bridge, opposite the way the officer had gone. Ran staggered to his feet, every cell in his body throbbing with pain. Wait. Nope. Ran stumbled after the trio, after the men who'd saved him. Please, wait. For fuck's sake, stop! They did stop. The leader turned back, regarded him with a mixture of amusement and irritation. Well, now, that sounded distressingly close to an imperative... You know what that word means, little cockroach? Rand nodded. Yeah, it's it's uh, an order. And do you know who I am? No. Then I'll bless you with a gift. I'll gift you the story of how you spat orders at Gouger Neb and live to tell about it. Neb? The gang boss? The man walked slowly back toward Rand. The very one, boy. Take the hint and be off. I won't tell you again. Rand took a cautious step forward. You have to help me. I got nothing. Well, set to me. I ain't no charity house. You saved my life. Let me... Uh, let me repay you. I'll do anything. The man Neb laughed. I got no use for drunken mudlocks. What about a, a journeyman artificer? Rand awoke to a throbbing head, a vaulting stomach, and cold shock. Worse than all these was not knowing precisely, or even vaguely, where he was. Only that someone had tossed a bucket of icy brown canal water over him, and he instinctively curled up into a pathetic little ball of hangover. Ah! Laughter and a searing bright light from above. Wakey, wakey, young cockroach. Time to see if you can scurry. What? There was something familiar about that voice. Oh, don't tell me you done forgot about last night already. Last night. Slowly the images reformed out of dark oblivion. A bridge, a man in a uniform, fists and blood, then... Neb? Hey, a shawnee penny for the clever lad! More laughter. Rand looked up, squinting in the sunlight filtered through a dirty window. Two men glared down at him with barely contained hilarity. One was most familiar, 
lean, leathered, and scarred with a band tied over one eye. This one was lime green rather than orange. Or had it been pink last night? Now a skull, worked expertly in silver, adorned the silk where the eye would be. Neb had a whole collection of swatches, it seemed. The other men, barrel-chested, with curly black hair and sunken eyes, might have been there last night, Rand couldn't remember. What am... I mean, what did I... Don't you remember? That's a bloody shame, ain't it, Errol? The other men nodded. A travesty, boss. As it happens, you swore your everlasting faith and undying fealty to humble old Neb, to serve and obey me until your last breath. I did? Neb shrugged. Well, not in so many words, but whatever. Even lowly parasites such as myself wouldn't hold a drunken wretch to them words. You're free to go if you want, no charge for the room. Neb crouched to come to eye level with Ren. The stench of cheap tobacco wafted all around him, threatening to turn Ren's stomach inside out. However, being the conscientious and diligent observer of human nature that I am, I dare to venture that you got no place to go. Would old Neb be right about that? Ran fought through the after-effects of the dragon piss and the beating, felt the danger radiating off the man, concealed not in the slightest by his cheery words. Ran had the distinct impression of being a fly caught in the clutches of a particularly amoral young boy, teetering on a knife's edge of either being fed sugar or having his wings plucked off for entertainment. Ran drew back, cleared his throat. Could, <clears throat> could I please have some water? Neb and his toady laughed again. You ain't had enough just now? Water fit to drink, please. Neb nodded with a smile. Harold. The other man sneered. What, you want me to fetch water for this little... Neb shot his gaze back at the man. His smile turned to a ferocious snarl. Is that any possible universe, my dear Harold, in which my intention of exactly that thing was not catastrophically clear? Harold glared back down at Neb a moment then uncrossed his arms and stalked out of whatever room they were in. Neb turned back to Rand. You see the tops I'll have to put up with? Of course, when one runs a criminal gang, one can't exactly recruit from the top of the barrel, can one? Um, y yes. I mean, no, sir. Boss. Um. Neb chuckled at Rand's discomfiture. His mood swung once again from fury to joviality. Relax, boy. But I still ain't got an answer to my query, which is usually fatal. Have you got anywhere to go? Rand sighed, clenching his quivering guts. No. I thought I might have one yesterday. I have a job, I mean, but it fell through. Then I burned whatever bridge I might have had to any other because I couldn't keep my temper. Ah, man, after my own art. So how does a journeyman artificer, with all them fancy papers, people putting picture frames and nail to the walls, fall so low as to be Captain Audley's not entertainment. Harold returned with the tankard of what Rand hoped was drinkable water, held it down just far enough that Rand had to stretch upward to get it. A quick sniff revealed no obvious adulteration, and he gulped greedily. <coughs> well, he said in between coughs, you see, I didn't, um, exactly, formally, technically get my papers, so you lied to me, Neb's eye bulged. No, well, not completely. Ah, uh, pardon me. Not completely. Exactly how much of a complete law do you think Algernab is inclined to accept? Half? Three quarters? Uh, one tenth? Less? Please, let me explain. Neb stood to his full height, looming over Rand, still curled up on the floor. I think you'd better. And it better be good, else you may indeed have one last place to go. The bottom of Shale Street Canal. 